he has had there uh, coffee and feel uh, have a little bit of a caffeine lift at this time of the morning. Um, so what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to ask you to have a conversation together without my intervention. I'll switch my screen off in a few minutes. Um, um, and I want you to, um, to consider um, the middle bullet point on this slide. Mm -hmm. And it has the question, is sex or gender important for understanding the phenomenon you investigate? And if so, how? That's the, that's the most crucial piece. And then, if necessary, you can go to the next piece, which is, are there other dimensions that be, can be considered? And a lot depends on the type of research you undertake, whether other uh, dimensions can be considered. So if you're doing uh, cell-based research, you might, you might not uh, necessarily look at geographical location, but you might. It might be important. Cells from people in, from different countries may vary, and so that might be something to consider. And then um, we will come back together as a group and share and have a discussion around the ideas that people have raised. So, is that okay? Yeah. yeah? I yes, see yes. some people yes. nodding heads, that's fair enough. So let's give it a timeline. Um, it's now 35 past the hour. Um, so maybe we give that, I'd say, about 10 minutes. So mm -hmm. we come back to have an open discussion at 45 past okay. the hour. Okay? That's okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll turn off my uh, mic and my camera for 10 minutes, okay, mm -hmm. to enable you to have uh, a discussion okay. on these things okay. without okay. being influenced by my presence. Okay, thank you. Da, ja. uh, nekim poslovima 
ako radi už uvijek ženi, jer je ona lijepa što je ok. Jer je to malo druga vrsta. Ne, da, ne, da. To je znači da je tako. Ne znam, ja mogu nešto tipa reći, samo, mislim, kad vas sam i rad na drugim, ono što trebamo predstaviti, ali ona utjecaj razmišljanja žene i muškarca u visokom obrazovnom sistemu, kako, na primjer, mi žene funkcionišemo više sa tom emocionalnom stranom, zašto bi se trebalo više istiti za nas kod muškaraca u određenim naukama. Da ne napravimo, da ne pravimo više tu razliku muško-ženske nauke. Da, jer ako studiraš tipa i te, ono to je za muškarce, ali možeš studirati jezike ili nešto što je iskošljeno. Da, zato što mi kao žene imamo neku tu osjećajnju stranu, neko više razmišljanje, ono deepest, ono dublje razmišljanje od muškarac, jer muškarci inače imaju tu desnu stranu funkcionisanja mozga i jašu, gdje uvijek gledaju nešto materialistički, hajmo reći. Oni su bazirani samo na sigurnost, od mišlja ne razmišljamo više, o otvorenim stvarima života. Jeste, mislim, to baš kao opšta se te mupa neko što je na nekom prijedonom kanalu su priču o tome kao koje zanimanje baš vezano za kao ženski rod, recimo da budeš profesorica ili učiteljica, dok radiš sa djecom, e to je to što ti govoriš, kao da mi žene imamo više empatije, da smo toga mi trebalo rasti s djecom ili sa... Zato i jesu te predvesnike, zašto muškarci jesu na linije što nam je profesorica govorila, pa da ne, zato što svijet nema sigurnost upovjerenja prema našom ženskom razmišljanju, da bi mi mogli nositi odgovornost neke, nemam pojma, ambasadorke, nekog premijera, ministra, što se sviđa. Ali što mi se ne mora ne da bude slučaj da mi zaista imamo raditi na svoj ili bilo što slično, to su jako dobri profesori, Za moje profesorca, ona je izuzetno cijeljim doktor, profesor komunikologije koji znaju i u Poreća Karla Uvarca Vrđinića. Ima iskustvo i izuzetne knjige koje je pisala. Ja kad sam pokazala svoju knjigu jednom u koji koji radi na Fedramu i na BH televiziju, kad je vidio, kaže, ko je ovo? Onda je stražio, to je moj profesor, kaže, možda mi možemo pozit sad, jer ono kao, ko je ta žena, kako uspjela ovako sve boku u životu, a ne znam se znam. Ima li sad tipa neke seminarske koje ste pisali makar ili nešto slično? Ili smo mogli da pokušam odgovoriti na neka od ovih pitanja? Da li se treba, da li je bitno da se u tim uzeti uključeno svi žene u ovaj način? Ne, ja nisam baš koji sad imam neki ten profesor za muškarac. Koji je to Mi ne radimo seminarske, pošto nam profesorica ne dozvoljava prije ženske godine. Kaže da nismo spremni, ali mi radimo dosta projekata. Mi smo sad u Veliku Mahu za ovaj projekat Karijerni centar za razvoj žena. I zapravo mi radimo nešto slično o ovome. Tu se radi o tome da žene koje su prije rata i u ratu i sad poslije rata koje nisu mogli završiti svoje obrazovanje. Baš zbog tih razloga, zato što ih je društvo. Onda je napisaći neki esej ili nešto slično, ali uglavnom ovo što se tiče ili anemija, da se ne uzna taj parametar ili je gladnija neko. To je jako dobro iskreno. Ali sad, što se tiče ovih sedmarskih baš na fakultetu, gdje je neko dobija ovdje brže specifične, na primjer, ne znam, kentralnici s tijemo škarci, ne znam, nema baš prostora za određenje ili tako nešto. Da, ili stvaranje eksplicita ili... Pa dobro, ali što se slušao, što se tiče stvaranje eksplicita, možda se nastavi poreći za uslov ženskog organizma. A i djeca to su neka razlika. Da, da. To može biti jedna od... Da se nastavi psihološko raspoloženje, ako ste neki organe. Znači da se i ti parametri neki uzme u obzir da se poreći ovaj kao pomoj organizma, pa to neće kao po ahmetov, u kontekstu, da li je ozbiljno, kolika je razlika. 
kao što je to radinoj se treba znati i danas sutra čili ječenje. Ok, da se drugačije treba tretirati žena kad uđe ima problem, na primjer, sa viškom manjkom, što god može da bude, ja da govorim da je kao to tamo vali, ali vjerujem da postoji neka razlog u tom segmentu, da naši organizmi su u postupu drugačije funkcionišu, i da tipa moj nalaz kad uradim njezine, to postoji ima veze zašto sam različite, neke vrijeze se. Tako da vam tu isto može biti jedna od opcija kako da vam se nešto što je... Pa, žene da se ima, da vas kod nakon prvi muškarci ništa žene nije imaju jeste vidi. Obzirom da imaju... Samo ne znam šta sad odgovorim i uopće da se sve kako opet pogledaju. Pa ne, pa ne, nije u vas. Ovo je nešto što je općenica. Ja sad ne znam, morat ću prvo pitat za to da se mogu od kakve sorci da mogu iskoristiti karijerni centar kao odlično, ne vidim onda ćemo dati jedan nalazić neki dugovi. Jer mi smo već radimo preko godinu dana na tome svemu, prošli smo i testirana i sve to živo. Ali da možu ih nešto napisati. Da ne bi praktički bilo, mi smo sve to radili, ja onda dođem samo u kraju i to nešto prezentujem. Jer ipak to je čitav tim na fakultetu i radi na tom projektu. Da bi znam da onaj, što je to za petog. Petog. Kako bi bilo koji sad? Pa poslat ćemo vam vremenski. Pa to, mislim, ono, pošto ima neke ovi da sam zato da ti subota. Aha, koliko će nas subota? Pijet je rekao subota. Tako je, tako je, tako je. Sad vremenski, ko ćemo znati kako? Pa imeli dva ili tri sata subota. Pa bude u četvrci do dva ujutro. Pa tako nešto. Tako nešto. Dobro ćemo na to. Vidjet ćemo gdje ćemo se pustiti ujutro. Gdje će nas joj ovo smjeti? Ja ništa ne vidim, ona nas pita i ništa ne vidim. Ja sam se moram da ću ovo ja ti govorim. Ja sam nam si dobro ostala vidjeti jer imam i ja ti opciju. Ja ću se da vas hvala vidim s tom crnom. Ja sam da mi što bilo. Što može da ovo drugo toga nešto je bilo? Are there other dimensions that can be considered in relation to sex, gender, gender's age? Vjenski educational level, income, to je naprimjer ti možeš pojasniti za svoje primu. Sve se ovo može uzeti u opciji da bi se, mada i kod vas, naprimjer, ako ćemo govoriti o poređenju muškog žetog organizma u kontekstu bilo koje vrste bolesti ili nečega se sliču, da se u opciji može uzeti age definitivno, starostna dob koja je, a sad ovo mi nešto ostalo ne znam, ali ne znam da li tipa postoje opcije od da li sad i neko živi, da li neko razvoj zdravi, da li je negdje ovako da se ne dobišem na to tvoja Amina, ima tu i stvar ona je opočnjiva, a ništa. Ok, 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 
also it can be considered in terms of uh, educational level, in terms of uh, age, in terms of different aspects that uh, contribute to this whole uh, research. Mm -hmm. I can see for sure that uh, gender would be uh, a central question to consider in, in your research idea space and carry that all the way through uh, then the process. That's really interesting. And there's lots of, of good um, uh, economics-based research on the, on the labour market and on those kinds of questions that you can draw in other countries that you could draw on as well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I just get off by my side because I study gynecology, so I just can say about that uh, between contacts when women and men talk, always have that uh, differences because women always think a little deeper than the men. Men always think like about material side. Uh, so I think that that is really important and fact that uh, women can can success like a, a good speech or uh, like uh, successful in special my uh, uh, yeah. yeah so I think that is the most important uh, connection between uh, between women because women is it's not uh, the connected. Uh, so mm -hmm. very well because always think that is uh, that is something what is powerful it's men so I think that is problem between communication up in ourselves because we uh, we always uh, say like okay doctor you can be the first I will like your helper so always have that something in us what uh, what stop us that's to go step more. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's a very important point and, uh, and uh, support um, from other women and... Um, yeah, we didn't support what? enough between us, like women to support women, okay, we can do that. I don't think like a feminist, but I think that, uh, that it is like something, uh, crisis situation where, especially in my country, where women don't think like no percent about that sphere of life. Like if we connected like one, we can success in everything in life. Didn't have the limits for us in anything in politics, in medicine, in arts, or something like that. We don't need to just be like on a small level of education or like housewife or something like that. Uh, absolutely, and I commend your ambition on all of this. This is absolutely right. I think that one of the things that in thinking about that, I think um, it, it, you, it's helpful to also think of it not as um, a fault of individual women or women as a collective, but a product of, of historical and patriarchal structures, so that it's often the structures that need to change. It's, it, it's, it's gender relations that need to change, it's, it's public policy around the acceptance of equality that needs to yeah, change. Yeah, that we can show to other genders that we are equal, the like, same as our day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very exciting, yeah, absolutely, big project. <coughs> Okay, I'm next. Well, um, as I said before uh, in the beginning, my colleague here, Neira, and I study uh, laboratory technologies. And um, mm. we thought about what our professor uh, of um, immunology said, that anemia is uh, more difficult to detect uh, in women than in men, because uh, we women have our menstrual cycles, etc. So we would like to focus on that. Uh, are those uh, um, parameters uh, taken into account when diagnosing uh, certain diseases or when uh, dosing certain uh, medications and such? 
a big question uh, because often um, those kinds of experiments um, are often undertaken with male sex cells because it is cheaper, easier, faster, <laughs> and there are all kinds of, um, of rational or, um, or what are presented as being rational reasons. And the findings are obviously very applicable to male cells and males in general. But precisely because of factors that you say, hormonal cycles and other things, it uh, it's not necessarily does not necessarily have the same effect on, on women and on female cells. And and I know that scientists are um, are resistant to looking at female cells. But the, but the consequences are that the drugs don't work. <laughs> yes, I agree completely. Yeah, so, so what's the point of ignoring the female cells at that early stage of research, even though it may be more costly, it may be more complex? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's it's something in the scientific world that uh, the scientists were by challenging. Yeah. So I hope you can do work of this kind. We hope so too. It can be really uh -huh. interesting and really useful actually if you manage to do something like that. I think it will be super useful for the society in general, so and for science of yeah. course. So that's something I think really important to have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that um, I think you don't mess, you don't feel that you have to do it on your own. I mean, science is a global community, and there must be scientists in laboratories in other parts of the world that are actually undertaking these studies. So linking with them and learning from them is, is maybe one strategy rather than feeling that you have to take this on your own shoulders. Yes, cooperation with some other people is really good. And yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. We have one question. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I want to question about your opinion. What do you think that uh, about the uh, connection between women in uh, in uh, academic? So how is going? Is it good or bad or like witches or how is connection in that uh, apart? Um, just let me understand uh, the question. Do you mean uh, I'm I'm not. The connection, I mean, the connection is connection to to be like a one or always separated. Like I have my opinion, we can be like we are always different. That uh, to make a union, uh, like a power, uh, like a power of union women in academic levels. So. Okay, the question is like this. Uh, do women cooperate uh, in this academic level really good? Or are you like um, separate in terms of various opinions and things like that? And is that reason why we have more men? Uh, on those positions in academia because women cannot, you know, get together, sit and talk about, you know, various things yeah. and exchange opinion. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that question. You ask a very deep question as well. And uh, when you think of academia, um, academia is based on the merit principle. So as the as academia rewards what it perceives to be the best, the brightest, uh, the most innovative of research and of people. And yet, when you look a little bit more closely at what the best is, 
you find that that is shaped by norms that and expectations that are very very much mirror the lives of men and uh, don't take into account the much more diverse lives of women um, and we well just stick to men and women in this regard at the moment so many universities for an example um, um, might uh, not be helpful to um, women with young children um, to help them through their studies, for example, or um, uh, people, men and women with disabilities often find it difficult to progress through academia. And so a way to counter this is in each university or forum, let's call it a university at the moment, for women to gather together to discuss what their significant issues and problems are for advancement within that university, crystallize those, and then seek to change the conditions that keep them from advancing forward. So I think there's a, a lot to be gained in uh, working together. Um, and, and that working together can, um, can be a very uh, a fruitful journey. Um, it will also um, get resistance from the people who occupy those positions because they see it as a threat. But, you know, such is the way it is and we work through all of, all of those issues. Um, I think it's very important that even though women come from different perspectives and different backgrounds, that they nonetheless have something in common. And one thing that they have in common is being women in an academic world. Or in another uh, occupation, it doesn't, doesn't, but we just happen to be talking about research, which is generally conducted in an academic setting. Um, uh, and and, under, and understanding the gender dynamics involved, I think, is important, and tackling those. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. So I don't know if that responds to that question. It's just a reflection. It's really difficult. We would, I think, we would need to have a full seminar on that topic. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, something that is really, you know, huge topic. Yeah, huge topic, definitely. But really interesting question, actually. I met really? the Professor Yvonne and some other professors from around the world, or girls, uh, and it was really nice to see how they function together, actually. They work for a long time together, as Professor Mary Lou that we met yeah, last because time. Yeah, because natural, normally it is yeah. to be selfish, so because of that, how that will be functioning. Well, people function, you know, but sometimes you have, you know, always you have exceptions. Yeah. So that's it. You are right, right? Yeah. Good. Sandra, do you have anything to, to add? Maybe she cannot hear us? Yes, yes, I'm yes. here. I'm here with you. Um, yeah, I think I can add something that can be interesting to everybody. So um, actually, I will put you here um, one link. Uh, so it's a very important document for all of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, two years ago, on 6th of November, so it's close to anniversary again, uh, in 2020, 6th of November 2020, so we uh, marked the anniversary of the adoption of UN Security Council Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace and Security. But, uh, so it was the online conference then, and different uh, institutions in Bosnia marked this, and uh, they actually emphasized the uh, are the role of women in uh, building the peacekeeping and peace building process. So their role uh, in conflict and uh, through different roles in, in conflicts because women are crucial in education in the health department during conflict and after the war. Uh, so I'm not going to tell more because I shared the link and you can also find in this page uh, a link for the agency uh, for gender equality uh, you can find 
reports there for the previous phases, and you can also find the action plan uh, that's uh, from 2018 until 2020. So these are all very useful facts. And also I want to emphasize these are all very important for my work and I can imagine for works of my colleagues, but for my work especially because uh, what I'm doing in PhD is connected, as I already said, with the uh, education, youth, peace building. So these are very, very uh, crucial things for my research because it's all about conflict resolution, peace building. So uh, the thing is, um, I want to emphasize the role of mothers of Srebrenica who were honored uh, this uh, July for their, it was an uh, international conference uh, marking 27 years since the genocide. And in this conference, everybody remembered of their role. So several years after the war, they were uh, returning to Srebrenica and in that phase uh, many don't remember. Uh, I also don't remember so good this phase, but I read uh, and I tried to remember, and of course there are documents that they um, were returning against the will of, of the um, present uh, government uh, in Republika Srpska in Srebrenica because they were trying to um, you know, to chase them away and they wanted to bury their loved ones and their remaining in Srebrenica. So first several years they needed to come uh, with the NATO soldiers, with people who had to escort them to be, you know, secure enough to even visit the spots. And with all of their uh, networking and petitions and international conferences, they really did a lot for uh, enlightening this uh, terrible spot of this genocide after Second World War on the soil of Europe. And uh, what they did is probably uh, bigger than all of our politicians together. So they are uh, in a way, uh, they are in a way are the real role models. Uh, here in, in the UK, our professors certainly know that uh, there is an organization called Remembering Srebrenica, so uh, they are like the biggest commemorator in the world. They have like 100 events every year commemorating this theme. So in schools, in municipalities, they have different events. They have hundreds. They have something called Memorial Month. So they want to make sure, get lessons from Srebrenica for their societies to teach their children what shouldn't be happening ever again. So the thing is, uh, uh, they also were honoring uh, heroines of Srebrenica in this team this year. Uh, they were very, uh, always they're emphasized, they're visiting London, they're doing their uh, 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 speeches and lectures, and they are really role models for everybody, you know, in this team of peace building and conflict resolution, because uh, this uh, culture of remembrance, cultural memory is the first step if you want to have a better future for everybody. So this is very important. And consequently, a for, of course, the role of youth and the gender and age and ethnicity and geographical position in this everything plays the role. But these are like just a few examples that I wanted to say. And maybe I can find the article where you can, but you probably know these things, but maybe it's useful for everybody if I share this another article where these things are like uh, um, so I see the links so I send it to I think this is a this is valuable contribution to our team. That's good. That's re re really interesting uh Sandra um and yeah I mean I think um the, the mothers of Srebrenica are exactly as you say huge role model and it's about collectively working together. These women have differences, but they are united around one uh, issue, remembering the, the genocide. And they also leverage their power as mothers, the symbolic power of being a mother, which is really very, very powerful and very difficult for people who do, who oppose their work to, to uh, use. To, to use again. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. So thank you for sharing that. That's really, really interesting. Thank you. Um, and it's, and it can just show what can be done. 
and on a world stage as well as at a, on a local at a local level. Yes, I, I think that women are. I mean, we all can agree that women are designed as a, as a gender differently. So, uh, you know, in every war, uh, men are people who have to, you know, be in war, in conflict uh, on either side, but that's their role. And women are those who need to protect the family, protect the children, try to survive. They are even more vulnerable in the, I never can pronounce the word vulnerable, in, in the war than in generally. And in generally, in peace, they are, uh, they are as children, as category that is vulnerable. I just can't pronounce the word. So, <laughs> it is, well, problem with few words in English. I think my English is pretty good, but I have a problem with few words for some reason. And this is the word. So, uh, maybe I don't want to acknowledge that we are vulnerable, but we are. Maybe that's the function. So, uh, the thing is, it's just uh, when, when we put this light to, to our uh, uh, engendering knowledge, when we put the light in every theme, uh, this is like a really like the presentation because as you say, in every theme we can put more light, uh, putting gender in, in that perspective because it changes perspective and potentials of, you know, resolving some situation and doing our research, completely change of perspective because simply said, men's perspective and women's perspectives are not the same in any possible situation or, of, of course, we are uh, human beings and there are many joint uh, ideas and points and in many situations uh, we can do the same thing but uh, in different situations you know we just uh, have different perspectives because our um, let's say priorities or our uh, 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 disposition uh, our, our potentials of solving certain matters are different so we have our strength as um, male have their strength we have ours so it can be used also, I'm sure, in, in different research. This, uh, the Mothers of Srebrenica example is something uh, these women uh, don't know what we are talking about today. They, when they started their work, it was instinctive. It's something like uh, uh, it's an instinct of somebody, survival instinct, like they have it uh, in war. After the war, it was instinct to preserve the family, to preserve even the remains to find, to bury their loved ones, to return to their homes, to be on their ground. Uh, in, in UK, majority of our diaspora is from Friedo County, because UK had a program called 1000, so they were actually evacuating the families of people who were in concentration camps, survival uh, people who uh, went to concentration camps and their families. So their stories are also really terrible ones. They also endured genocide, the big, the biggest concentration of, of uh, massive graveyards in Bosnia are in Kreto County. The biggest, uh, the biggest uh, 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 massive graveyard, Tamashita, was found in Kreto. So they also had these terrible stories. But these people are returning to Kreto every year for several times, and sometimes I ask them, you know. You know, how can you still feel that much connection? Maybe it's not polite to ask, but I needed to ask, and many of them are my friends. And they said, it's our homeland, it's our homes. We don't have other place where our, we are, our uh, uh, heritage is there, our ancestors are there. So, yeah, these are our roots. So, it's, it's the instinct of the human being to try to make right even in such a situation so what they did is just showing us all how it should be done so then after this phase we can have reconciliation and peace building without it we couldn't so they are the real terms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely samurai very well said indeed indeed uh, and gives all of us heart i think um to to address uh, the, the gender dimension in, in our work. And as we address it in our work and in re our research, we also uh, uh, can address it in our lives as well. Yeah, so, so okay. Um, if, um, if we have no further questions, then maybe we could conclude, yes? yes. Yeah.
Yes. Is that okay with everyone? We've, I think we've had two hours of a lovely conversation. Um, and thank you for bearing with our uh, technological challenges. <laughs> and a big thank you to Amina for solving them. <laughs> um, so I wish all of you every success in your research in integrating sex and gender as an integral part of your own research and in pursuing your careers into the future as well. I look forward to hearing from Amina how all of you are getting on in the next few months because I'll be seeing Amina hopefully uh, soon again. Yes. So thank you all very much indeed and it's been a privilege to speak with you all. Okay, is it okay for you if I can share your email address so if they have some questions, they can write you tomorrow maybe? If is that okay? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, okay. sure, of course you can. Good. Yes, good. I'll share it with, together with the presentation that we have, so good. Yeah, perfect. That's great. Okay, colleagues, enjoy the Saturday now. Now you're free. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you a lot for your time. We had a really great time with you. Uh, it was really, really useful. So I hope that we will all, all use this knowledge that we gained today to, to make our works even better. So thank you a lot once again. It was a pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you very much, Amina. My pleasure to be with you. And uh, please don't forget to send my very best wishes to Mirza and Jasminka and all my friends in uh, Bosnia. I will, I will say also hello to Sarah. Okay. Will do. Will okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Bye.